Hello everyone, happy Friday, happy Cinco de Mayo to everyone out there. We have another fresh episode of Locked on Penguins podcast coming up right your way right now. We have Danton Heinen season review. That is next on the list of bottom six wingers. And we also do have a couple of small GM search updates. Not much, but more than what we've got in the last week or two. We're going to touch on that to start the show. Then we'll get to Heinen's review. And then we'll end the show with some playoff talk and why you, know, you might be rooting for a couple of teams to lose if you want to see the new GM here a bit faster. That's all coming up right after this drop. Your Locked On Penguins, your daily podcast on the Pittsburgh Penguins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I am your host, Hunter Hodes. Remember to follow me on Twitter, at Hunter Hodes, follow the show's Twitter at L. Lawrence or Penguins. And of course, thank you all so much for making this your first listen of the day. We're free and available on all platforms. Remember, this is your team every day. And, you know, so I apologize for this being a little bit of a later upload. <clears throat> first time in a while, I had a little bit of a, a little tough mishap with, well, no, I shouldn't say mishap, just a bump along the road, um, just with my anxiety for today. First time, I actually about five, six, seven weeks, but, you know, got through it. You know, I've I'm better than I have ever been just dealing with it. And, you know, I'm able to record today and I, I feel refreshed. So um, don't worry. I, I am I am okay, to, to say the least. Uh, but let's jump right into it. So um, a couple little bit of updates um, about the GM search. It was first yesterday we saw from Elliot Friedman. Um, he went on NHL Network. Someone sent me this clip. Um, I, I won't be able to play it on my PC because um, <clears throat> it's just... You know, I, I don't know. My PC's audio is just weird as crap. And and Freeman basically said that the Penguins have already interviewed a couple of people, including Steve Gilly, but he thinks they're also waiting for Kyle Dubas. He did throw out Bur- Bowman and Bergen and maybe Doug Wilson. You know, I don't really buy that that much just because, you know, those three have been out of the game for so long that I think it's just a- the agents wanting reporters to put their names out there. Um, uh, people are probably wondering, you know, who Steve Gilly is. Um, so Greeley... He was hired as so he, he works right now for the Dallas Stars. Um, before that, he was um, the assistant general manager. Geez, I'm not being able to type on my PC. And right right now, his job is the director of hockey strategy slash scouting, and he's the director of hockey development in Dallas. Uh, again, he was assistant general manager in Buffalo from 2017 to 2020. Also has worked with the New York Rangers, Boston University, Los Angeles Kings, and the uh, U.S. National Team Development Program. Um, <clears throat> so he's worked in analytics. He's also worked in, uh, with scouting. He's kind of like the mini version of Eric Tolsky. Young guy, bright future. I think would be a pretty solid hire, but in terms of if you know how far up on my list, I probably wouldn't have him in my top three, but maybe you know top five top six, something like that. No, he, he would he would be a fine hire. I just think that the Penguins could do better um, if, if there are some of their top candidates are out there available to them. But don't worry. Like he, he, I think he will be a much better hire than Ron Hextall. It's, I'm, it's glad to, I'm glad to hear that they potentially interviewed him. You know, that was the first bit of news that we saw um, when it comes to the, the GM search on Thursday. Then um, I, was, I read DK's Friday Insider um this morning and DK even said the process is well underway. There have been multiple interviews from what I've heard. And he also said that a search firm has been involved. He said, he doesn't know which or to what extent, but that one is involved. He also said no decision has been made on the number of individuals would be involved in the front office, whether that's, you know, president of hockey operations and a GM or just a GM or a GM and a senior advisor and maybe a president of hockey operations, who knows. But he did say here the emphasis is on analytics for this hire. That's no scoop. That is how FSG has operate, operated, especially with John Henry over the years. But, you know, he has said the um, the emphasis is on analytics. That right there should rule out Stan Bowman, especially, especially you know, for non-hockey, you know, not, not even non-hockey related reasons, but all for all this baggage, I should say. And when you, you don't even factor that in, he's just not a good general manager. That should rule out Mark Bergman. And uh, Wilson, because they never really used much analytical insight when they were running the Canadians and the Sharks, respectively. Um, I, I think that honestly rules out a lot of retreads in this process, Brad Trilliving included. Um, I don't really know how much the Flames had in terms of 
um, an analytical structure, but you know, this just seems to me that they're going younger and more innovative. Um, DK also said, you know, there are multiple candidates still working for the eight teams, still alive in the Stanley Cup playoffs, and that might be a bigger factor than anyone wants to admit. Among those, Kyle Dubas, Eric Tolsky, Jason Botterill, and Steve Greeley. But again, Elliot Freeman has said they've already had an interview with him. Um, <clears throat> he said, you know, he wishes he had more, but, you know, he doesn't think there's any raging hurry at hand. Um, it's been three weeks, not a lot of leaks out there, Rob Ross, he said um, today in his story. Um, as well, that he's really not hearing too, too much, but they have, they have started to, you know, putting a list together. Pierre Lebrun echoed that report, said there's going to be about 10 to 12 interviews for the first round, and they're going to cut back down to a list of finalists and then bring the finalists in to Pittsburgh and then make a decision. If I had to guess, the ends, you're probably looking at early June for a hire, maybe end of May. You know, I know they said they want to do this as soon as possible without feeling rushed, but with how teams have people on it that are still playing, I think they want to wait this out a little bit. You know, they're definitely paying attention to Toronto right now. They're down 0-2 to the Florida Panthers. If Toronto bows out quickly here, I do think you could see this process really ramp up if they do want to interview Kyle Dubas, and I do think they do. I, I, I'm just speculating on that part, but in terms of where the search has been, they're keeping it really quiet. Would not be surprised in the slightest if they do have Dubas on their sites. So we'll have to see when it comes to that. Same with Aaron Tolsky. Carolina's up one nothing in their series right now. Um, I, I, last I checked, it was scoreless in this game against the Devils. But you know I, I, that is going to change again by the time you all listen to this episode of the podcast. So you know Jason Botterill, I'm sure they'll want to talk to. I, I didn't really think he was that good of a GM in Buffalo. Yes, he did lay Lane Tage Thompson for them um, in the O'Reilly trade. Outside of that, I don't really think he did too too much. Right. But it's understandable that they would want to talk to him because he has familiarity with the franchise. But, you know, three weeks in, not a lot of leaks. I think that's by design. They want to keep this very quiet. But you're starting to see, you know, some potential interviews being done, the first round at least. They're trying to speak to as many candidates as they can. Um, I'll keep saying it for people. I do not want to retread. I want someone who is new, fresh, has innovate, is more innovated and just analytically inclined. You know, someone who is ready for this, even though they haven't been a full-time GM before. I am just not interested in the retread options out there for multiple reasons, you know, whoever it is. So those are the latest updates on the GM search. Um, we'll have to see, you know, you know what the list actually looks like. I'm sure it'll be reported at some point, whether it's you know, DK, Rossi, Pierre Lebrun. You know, if I hear a scoop that, that I trust from someone that I know, I will obviously deliver it to you all if I'm allowed to. I haven't heard anything on my end. I don't, again, I don't hear too much as it is anyway, but if you're going to put that out there, but again, you know, three more, three weeks, it's been three weeks. I think you're probably looking at at least three more until they make this hire. A member of the Penguins, when they fired Ray Sherwood on, I believe it was mid-May in 2014, they hired Jim Rutherford June 4th. So that was about a few weeks before the draft. They will have a GM well before the draft. The draft this year about, I think it's what, June 28th, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere around there, I believe. Um, right just right before free agency. Um, you know, obviously, the one that took the short amount, short amount of time was replacing Jim Rutherford. Ron Hextall was hired in two weeks, but that was because it was during the season. They wanted to, they rushed into that, I think. And I believe the one when Shiro was hired after Craig Patrick's contract was not renewed, that one lasted a full month. So again, you're probably looking at at least another few weeks here. Would not be surprised, Yins, if this search, search, search excuse me, lasts almost lasts almost two months. So and, you know they, they gotta get this right. You know you have to hire the cream of the crop executives here to make sure that they can put a quality team on the ice to get the final great hockey out of Sidney Crosby of getting Malkin and Crystal Tang. That is all that matters. They're in win now mode have to get this right. And hopefully Fenway Sports Group will get it right. But that is it for the updates on the GM search. Again, Steve Greeley would be a good hire, just not on my top three candidates wise, but still, still I, I would be very much <clears throat> in favor of it. But again, that wraps up this first segment. Coming up after this commercial break, we are going to discuss Dan Heinen's season review. Will he be back next season since he's a UFA and all that stuff? But before we get into that, for a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. 
Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know that part will fit or you get your money back because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right price on ebaymotors.com. That's right. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers, eligible items only, exclusions apply. All right, I'm back in this episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I am your host, Hunter Hodes. Remember to follow me on Twitter, Hunter Hodes. Follow the show, Twitter, Alan Show Penguins. And of course, thank you all so much for making this your first listen of the day. We are free and available on all platforms. So let's jump right into it with Danton Heinen's season in review. Remember, the Penguins brought him back for basically a million coming into this season. Looked like a steal. And then he had a really down season eight goals 22 points in 65 games this came after he had 18 goals in 33 points in 76 games the year before 15 of those 18 goals right even strength seven of his eight goals this season were at five on five um he shot 13 percent last season which is the second highest of his career this season a point three percent average time on ice 10 minutes 45 seconds last year 12 minutes 43 so well, about a two minute um decrease to this year but still um, he was not the same player and it, it showed, you know, he had stone hands. I felt like for a lot of the season, you know, played in 65 games was a healthy scratch, honestly, but he was on the ice. The Penguins still had 51% of the shot attempts, 25 goals for 29 goals against for 46.3% of the actual goals expected goal share. When he was on the ice, the Penguins had 53% of that. So that's good. 51.7% of the scoring chances, 52% of the high danger chances, and then pure 50% in terms to high danger goals for. So decent underlines, but you know, not nearly as good as last year when he had 54% of the shot attempts, you know, 54% of the actual goals for, 56% expected goal share, 57% scoring chances, and 58% high danger chances. It was night and day. Um, and, I, and I think part of that does have to do with him playing on a line with Jeff Carter for a lot of the season because Carter has been washed for the last year, at least. So that definitely, I think, tanked his value a little bit. But also, I said this going into the year, it was going to be very hard for him to replicate that success. 18 goals, say what you want. Good, very good. But it's a little fluky. You know, this was a career high for him. That was the last time he scored even close to that against. 2017-18, the Bruins, 16 goals, 47 points. He had um, 11 in Boston in the next season. The next season after that had 10 total, had seven the year um, before in Anaheim. I figured he was going to do good in Pittsburgh that first year he was here, but I didn't think he was going to be 18 goals. I said, easy 10 goals. I made that bet with my buddy Jeff. I said, yeah, he's easily going to score 10. Did not think he would almost score 20 and be one of their top bottom six scores on the team. So, Eight goals in 65 games. That's just not good enough. Yes, I understand he was a healthy scratch for a little bit of the season, but you know it was kind of deserved at the time because he really wasn't putting the puck in the back of that. He started off the season playing well, had a couple um, goals against the Blue Jackets. They got a goal before that as well. He you know, was actually playing well to start the season, but then he hit a really bad slump, came out of the lineup when he came back in, still was slumping, scored a couple times, came back out of the lineup. He just never properly had his footing. But still, you know, you were always going to see a little bit of decrease in production because I don't think you can expect a bottom six player to score, you know, 15 to 18 every year unless, you know, you're actually pretty good. You know, And I like Heinen's game. I think he has a nice deceptive shot. I think his passing ability is, is good. His forechecking ability is not bad. But, you know, he was in line for a little bit of regression this season. I still thought, I still thought he would score maybe 10 to 12. You know, he would come down obviously from 18, but I didn't think he would score – you know, eight, the eight that he did this year, and only seven at five on five. I, I just thought that was, I, I didn't think his goal production would come down by 10. So, you know, his PK ability was okay to say the least. He never really got time on the second power play, which, I mean, come on. Does anyone expect him to with all that talent the Penguins have, especially on the first unit? Then on the second unit, they can put Zucker there, Russ, Jeff Petrie. Yeah, you know, whoever they want. I mean, well, you know, you 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 could honestly make a small argument to have Heine in there. I think he was on the second power play unit last year, but that was when it was deserved because you know he he was one of their best goal scorers in the bottom six. You know, him him and Evan Rodriguez. Wow, you know, combined last year, thirty eight goals, 
Yup. And if you take that out this year, only eight goals from Heinen this year, the Penguins lost 30 goals from last year's team to this year's team. Everybody gets gone, and then Heinen had 10 go away and only had eight this year. The Penguins did not replace 30 goals of production that they got last season. I know one player stayed and one player left. Still, <clears throat> that's not good enough. And that, you know, that's also on Ryan Hextall for not, you know, replacing those 38 goals. Because I said at the time, you know, it's going to be hard to replace that many goals in your bottom six. And, you know, luckily I got that right. But, you know, he, you can see that he was in Mike Sullivan's doghouse for a bit this season. I think he is going to sign a cheap contract somewhere. I just don't think it's going to be here in Pittsburgh. Um, you know, you could get him definitely for a cheap deal one year, one million again, maybe even less. But in terms with the new GM, you know, he's not going to have any loyalty to him. I think the new GM, whoever he or she is, will want to bring in more adequate depth that can score a bit better. Um, I think that's why you're going to see Heinen not be back next season. And, that, and that's going to be the theme for a couple other players in the bottom six who I will get to a little later on uh, next week when I continue the season reviews. But um, I would probably let Heinen walk. You know, we get a little bit of cap space from that. And I think you can replace him and get more than eight goals somewhere else, especially on uh, you know that same kind of contract. Or if you want to pay a little bit more for a bottom six player, not like a Brock McGinn kind of deal, but something a little less, a little less term, you know, someone that can give you 10 to 12, 13, 14 goals, something like that. I think the Penguins can definitely do that. So, you know, that really wraps up Danton Heinen's season review. Just not good enough from him. I'm sure he knows that he'll try to probably get a deal somewhere else. And, you know, maybe he'll have another a season like he did um, in 2022 for the Penguins where he was, you know, actually pretty decent uh, to say the least. But again, that does it for this segment. Coming up to end the show, we're going to discuss some more playoff related matters. So stick around for that coming up right after this commercial break. All right, I'm back in this episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I am your host, Hunter Hodes. Remember to follow me on Twitter, Hunter Hodes. Follow the show's Twitter at <clears throat> Eleanor for Penguins. And of course, thank you all so much for making this your first listen of the day. And <clears throat> looking at right now, so Devils and Hurricanes tied at zero going into the second period. Must win here for New Jersey. Well, isn't a must win since they came down from 0-2. I would say so because I think the Hurricanes are better than the Rangers. Um, though the Hurricanes have been, they've struggled a little bit on the road, but they did win two road playoff games against the Islanders. That's a tough UBS arena. I don't care that they're not playing in the dump that they call the Nassau Coliseum. Still a tough arena to play in. You know, that the Islanders fans are known for being, you know, rabid crazy. So they went two and one in their opening round. You, know, you, you don't want to fall behind 0-2 you, uh, ever. You know, usually the team that goes up 0-2 wins the series over 80% of the time. You don't want to do that here. Um, <clears throat> last night the games were pretty good. <clears throat> Gotta say though, troubles brewing in Toronto. And yes, those Kyle Dubis rumors are gonna heat up if they continue to lose. If they lose this series to the Panthers, and it's looking that way because the Panthers had that team of destiny like feel, you're going to hear about Dubis. Why do you think, you know, I know there's not been a lot of leaks with this search. Why do you think it's taking this long? One of the reasons, at least. Yeah. Speculating here, I know. I kind of think they want to interview Dubis. If they lose, honestly, right when that final whistle blows, I would not be stunned if Fenway Sports Group gives him a call 10 minutes after. Hey, or leave a message. Hey, you know, I know your season just ended, but give us a call back. We'd like to speak with you. Maybe it's a bit soon, blah, 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 blah. Would that surprise you at all? No. So if you are someone that wants Kyle Dubas here, you can root for the Leafs to lose. I know some of the people don't want him here. You know, my thoughts, I made my thoughts clear. I think he's a very bright hockey mind. He does use analytics, but he is also prone to sometimes of being like a hockey man or bringing in some sandpaper and some players who are not that good. So yeah, we all have that to deal with. I would be fine with the hire personally. I don't know if I'd have him in my top three, but he'd definitely be up there like kind of like with Steve Gurley and stuff. But, you know, I, I still think he would be a pretty solid hire if the Penguins were to bring him in. So, you have to look forward to the Panthers. Wow. They stole that one. Sergei Bobrovsky is just turning back time. I think I think the Leafs just need to see, I, I think the Leafs need to put Penguin sweaters on so Sergei Bobrovsky just gets the crickets. Or, just, you know, I know that's not the crickets. Just, you know, he gets the jibbers. Like, oh my God, I see, I see black and gold. I'm just going to give up five goals a game, right? So, 
Leafs in a world of trouble. Stars beat the Kraken tied series in that really nice game by the Stars. They beat the Kraken down pretty good. They deserved a win meter, I think, was at like 98%. Kraken had no business being in in that game, but, you know, really nice job at the Stars to pull even there. Steve Grilly, he works for the Stars, of course. Kraken, I think the Penguins are waiting to interview someone there like Jason Botterill and other people in that front office would not be surprised if, you know, they – take a handful of people from that front office to interview uh, once they finalize and request permission. You know, the fact that Pierre Lebrun said that, you know, they're in the process of requesting permission, you know, there are people I'm sure on teams and playing that they have to do that for. And remember, there is no specific rule that, you know, you can't interview someone while a team is playing. It's not the NFL. You can request permission and someone can interview during the playoffs. It's a bit weird. Yes. But you can still do it, and you know we'll see. And I think with what Elliot Freeman said about Steve Gurley, they've already done that. I'm sure they're in the process of probably trying to act, talk to Eric Tolsky. They're waiting for Kyle Dubas because you know he's actually the full time GM. His contract um, is not fully up yet. That's a different one, I think, than Tolsky because he's the assistant. But in terms of Dubas, they're actually going to wait for him. You know, if if they get their wish and he's eliminated in the next couple of, of uh, days. They'll, they'll actually wait because, you know, the Leafs, Brendan Shanahan's going to say no if they ask to interview him. So once there's these ends and he's officially out of a contract, then they, they can just go to him. But that was a fun game to watch. Dallas is such a tough out. Really fun to watch. They can, the old guys can beat you. The young guys can beat you. Their defense is mobile. They're active. Same thing. They're nasty. They got a star goaltender. That's a fun team to watch. Vegas, Edmonton not playing tonight, but Vegas up one nothing. In that series, the Oilers lost for the first time in regulation in over a month in that game in Vegas. And we actually saw back-to-back games of four plus goals. I want to correct myself. I said it was Den- uh, I said it was um Yoel Kivi Ronta that had the last time of four goals. I had the right team, wrong player. He had a hat trick in that game. It was uh Dennis Gurionov in the 2020 run that had four last to play that had four goals before Jovavelski, before Leon Dryasov. And again, the last player that had five was Mario. So we'll see if anyone joins him. You know, if you select others at some point, maybe during this run or during a run down the road, but man, dry has just been unreal. Yeah, you know, I know Connor McDavid is the best player in hockey, but dry is putting up like Crosby like numbers in the playoffs when he was a kid. It is something to behold. You know, I'm pretty sure I saw a stat somewhere where dry is like one point off from like the point leader of last year's playoffs through four rounds. We just started round two. <laughs> He's that good, people. <laughs> He's he is dra- him and McDavid are just dragging the rest of that roster. At home, Skinner's not been that good, but you know it's mainly just been those two. They're just dragging them, but you know that's gonna be a fun game. Um, I, I believe game two is Saturday at the Fortress, but we'll have to see how this game against New Jersey uh, goes with Carolina. Um, if Carolina wins, they'll be up 2-0, and you know the Eric Tolsky rumors might have to you know maybe. Still wait a little bit, but again, the Penguins can't ask permission during this. But you know, we'll have to see what Don Waddell would say. He's the current um, full time GM there. But again, um, that will do it for this episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. Thank you all so much for listening slash watching. Um, I'll be back with another episode for you all on Monday. I very much appreciate you all tuning in. Hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy watching the playoff hockey. We'll have to see if anything um, comes with the Penguins GM search. If there's any updates, probably not. Probably have to wait until next week. But again, um, until next time, I'm Hunter Hodes. You can follow me on Twitter at Hunter Hodes. The show is for Ellen Show Penguins. And I'll talk with you all on Wednesday. On Wednesday. On Monday.